Hello, folks. Uh, this is Scott Gary. I'm with the Office of Community Development, and I want to welcome you to the Homeless Crisis Response Program and Supportive Housing Program Application Training. We have a short training for you today, and we want to describe to you the application process for HCRP and SHP. This year, we are doing awards on an allocation basis. And we will not be accepting any applications from new agencies uh, this year. The allocation amounts will be made available to you uh, about the same time as the applications go live, uh, which we hope for CRP to go live next week. Later uh, in the training, Patrick and Amy will cover areas uh, for you to be aware of for the HCRP and SHP application. It's very similar to last year. It's more streamlined. Uh, it will probably take you less time to complete these applications. But with that, I'd like to pass it to Patrick to talk about uh, HCRP. Pat? Okay, hello everybody, Patrick Hart. Um, could you go to the next slide, please? So we're, this is the HS, HCRP and SHP uh, application training. Now, some people get confused with HCRP. As we all know, it entails two different elements. One is housing stability, one is emergency shelter. Sometimes people say HCRP, just meaning housing stability. With housing stability, we have rapid rehousing and homelessness prevention. Next slide, please. Okay, so there's a couple of general things to think about. Implementation, um, we want people to serve the hardest to serve people in, for instance, uh, with homelessness prevention, it should be people double up, people most likely to be homeless. Um, and also we want to serve people, we want to prevent people from becoming homeless or move people to re uh, permanent housing. So we don't want to have an overemphasis on sustainability. We don't know what circumstances people are going to face and how they're going to work out of their situations. But with our help, most people are successful. Um, and you also want to be coordinating with other agencies in your community to have appropriate referral services. And also you want to work with landlords in a constructive way. That's very challenging, we're finding out. But And in the opportunities we have really, um, housing stability works effectively. People won't come into the shelter and people that are in the shelter will be able to lose, um, leave sooner and stay not as long. Anyway, um, so we're going to reduce the length of time in homelessness. Next slide, please. So emergency shelter, we are putting a put out the uh, emergency shelter standards are available on our TA site and our TA site will have a link later on. Um, you know, barriers, there's always barriers. We don't want to communicate with people in the continuum um, and opportunities. Again, we want to be able to link people in shelter with rapid rehousing. Anyway, um, next slide, please. Uh, the good news, and Scott already said, it's non-competitive. It's going to be a very streamlined application. There'll be fewer questions. Um, there's still a required match for emergency shelter. There's no match for housing stability as usual, and the due date is July 23rd, 2020. I think Amy's next, Amy Bullard. Next slide. Hi everyone, it's Amy Bullard, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, SHP. Next slide, please. As most of you know, the Supportive Housing Program funds two different types of projects. It funds transitional housing, which is designed for people who um, are homeless, maybe in shelter, and have higher needs and barriers than some others where um, additional supportive services may be beneficial to them before moving them into permanent housing. There is a condition for transitional housing to have an exit strategy. It is not an end in itself, um, but a step toward getting permanently housed. And then permanent supportive housing is for folks who have a documented disability and that um, needs to be documented by a person who is certified to do so within 45 days of placement in the SH. And um, we like for those programs to be prioritizing 
um, placement for chronically homeless people. Both of these programs have an income requirement that would be at or under 35% of AMI. So it's important to do those income verifications and have record of that in the client file. Next slide, please. Um, a great development for this year in order to reduce the burden and, and make things easier on everyone is that the SHP application will not be competitive, which is very unusual. It normally is both uh, projects. So um, it is more streamlined for your questions. We are maintaining the match, however, and there needs to be $1 in match for every $2 of the uh, grant request. We're looking for these applications to be due August 20th, and they should become open a few weeks down the road after the HCRP application opens up. Next slide. And we're going to go over the application a little bit. Patrick's going to get started, and then I'll finish up. Hello, everybody. I want to provide some tips on the application. Um, my advice, our, our advice is to be very systematic and thorough. This way, you don't have any run into any problems. Sometimes people get caught up in different things, but if you really take your time and go slow, you won't have any problems. So the first thing you want to do is to check your permissions in Ocean. Well, actually, first thing you want to do is to see if you have a valid Ocean account, because some people might not. Some, some for some people, their password may have been expired, so you need to check that. And the permissions, the permissions you would have, you have permission to start the application, and you have permission to submit the application. You got to make sure that the person submitting the application has the role in Ocean. Um, guidelines and instructions are in a technical assistance site. Uh, the link will be provided later in the training. Um, I always access that. The review now, start from the beginning. You want to review the guidelines prior to starting the application and use the instructions. We have instructions in the application. The best way to do that, because OCEAN can be a little complicated, and if you follow the instructions, everything will be laid out and you can complete it successfully. Next slide, please. So, of course, you want to start early. We always have people with the at the last minute, wanted to submit an application. Uh, sometimes, like we said, they might not have their proper role in OCEAN. They can't do it. There's a lot of issues that come up. So the earlier start, the better you are. Um, provide complete answers using the forms provided. Also, with the narrative questions, just type the, your response right after the question so we can identify your response. Submit prior to the due date, of course. And contact your grant manager with any questions. We're always open to you know, emails with questions. We're always responding. We'll respond pretty quickly um, again, but you should read instructions and follow the uh, instructions of the application. And if you have problems, contact us. Uh, next slide, please. Now, Amy Bullard is going to take over. Okay, I'm going to go over some specifics for working in OCEAN once you've gotten your authorizations and you're logged in. To start an application, it's just a little bit tricky and a lot of people get held up on this. So you're going to want to select applications from that top menu bar and from the drop down, select active application search. Next slide, please. That should present this drop down menu and from it, you're going to select whichever program you're applying for. After you've done that, you need to click the search button, which will look and see if you have an application started. And if not, it will activate the add new grant request button. The nice thing about this feature is that you can start an application and save it and come back to it to finish. And this will be how you find an application you've started as well. Next slide. Please. As you go through the application, you'll notice the um, left menu bar down the left side of the screen will expand as you go on. So if you read through all the instructions before you start, you'll realize that not all of those tabs are there at the very beginning. It kind of builds um, on itself as you go through. So from the program description, you're going to select what type of program you're applying for 
whether emergency shelter or housing stability in the HCRP or permanent supportive housing or transitional housing in the SHP. Select that and then uh, save and it will allow you to proceed with the application. Next slide, please. On the project details tab, this is where you're going to indicate the um, majority of your budget and whether or not you're going to ask for some of the funds to cover administration. Administrative funds are optional and can be no more than 5% of your grant request. And if you are going to ask for those, they need to be uh, listed as a separate project because we track that information separately. Then the remaining amount of your grant request would go under one project. Next slide, please. When you go to the performance proposed tab, you're going to be asked to enter information where you're saying what you think you'll be doing during the grant period that starts January 1st of 21 and ends December 31st of 2022. And um, you will want to list your continuum standards. It is important that the um, applicant knows their continuum standards and enters them correctly. And then identify what performance outcomes you plan to reach for. And these should be based upon what you've done in the past, looking at your APR that you've produced out of the HMIS. Should you have any performance measures that you don't think will meet your continuums, you should address that in the narrative question where you have the opportunity to do so. Next slide, please. On the activity information tab, this is where you will specify the breakdown for um, the amount of money you want to spend on the various activities that are eligible for each application. What we're showing here on the slide is the housing stability uh, application, and then the categories are a little bit different um, in the SHP. But you will specify the amount and then save and go forward. Next slide, please. And we're going to wrap up with that. Remember that the um, instructions are at the technical assistance site, gives you a step by step for every single tab in the application, you do need to follow it from top to bottom because it builds on itself. The fillable documents are, will also be available on the technical assistance site, as well as those updated emergency shelter um, standards that Patrick referred to earlier. And we also are providing here the link for the consolidated plan that um, Development Services Agency provides to HUD every year in case you'd like to reference that. Next slide, please. And on behalf of the supportive housing section, I want to thank you for listening. Know that we're always available to help you. You can see that you've got links to each of our emails there. And that's the best way to contact us now. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you. Have a good day.